climb aboard. This is the Miles to Go podcast. And now here's your host, Ed Pizza. Hey guys, welcome back to the Miles to Go podcast. In 2024, we have all four of the freaky foursome ready to talk a little bit about travel. And I am hiding out in my dad's spare bedroom right now, so the background looks pretty horrendous and definitely less less polished than if you're listening on if you're watching on video and you can see the lovely plane over Julian Keel's shoulder, founder and CEO of Points Path. The two planes over the shoulder of my good buddy Summer from the Points Guy. Wait, three planes. My apologies. Three planes over the shoulder. And Mr. Kerr bringing it in hot with the built gear. Ready to rare and to go in 2024. How's everybody doing? Good. Happy New Year, Let's everybody. make magic and then introduce this as a freaky foursome. So, I mean, that's what I, I, mean, I, told my, that's what I, I told thought this was wife, a but... different kind of podcast, but I have missed a few episodes. So, I don't by, know. by a few, she means all of them. <laughs> she hasn't ever listened to it. So. Hey, well, look, we should celebrate, though. I, it, there, there's a moment here. Julian listened to a podcast in 2023. He listened to a podcast. Which one? It wasn't this I, one, but he listened I to did. one. Not, not, not this one, yes. Right. Right. Exactly. Fair. But yeah, yeah. But I did. That is true. I listened to an episode of a other podcast, which was good. Were they talking the about uh, Points Path in the episode? The one you were you talking about? They were talking about me, yeah. So I, that's why I listened. That's I listened correct. to myself on a podcast. <laughs> no, Damn it, he didn't. Summer. We're really no, proud of you. Don't call me out on that stuff. <laughs> No, I don't think he actually listened to himself. He listened to the episode before when we talked about him, before he was there, like he wasn't there. Did you actually I listen to him? I said about him. Right. Yeah. He, uh, you, that's because I was tricked. I picked the wrong episode. I was sit, sat there waiting for my mention, and then turned out I listened to the wrong episode. And at that point, I gave up. I'm like, well, I'm not doing this again. So, <laughs> Well, hey, but look, I mean, you're off the schneid, man. You are, you are, you're officially a podcast listener. Congratulations. I am. Fortunately, that was 2023, so I can start my record again starting in 2024. So, Well, I, I just want to say that I, uh, on behalf of all of the listeners of Miles to Go and all 314 episodes counting today that we have put in the books, we are proud that you have not yet listened to any of the 314. I mean, look Thank at you. all that un you. untapped market you have, Ed, just sitting Listen. right here in front of you. Like the expansion limits are boundless. Yep. <laughs> By getting the two guests to listen, we could double our podcast audience. <laughs> fifty percent of, of our guests today have not listened. <laughs> I have learned that because I recently, well, not recently, several months ago, joined Ed's Slack group, and there are some really great dedicated listeners in there, and really great uh, Miles people. So, well, I, if they I talk bad that. about us, Julian, we'll never hear it, so it's okay. Well, no, but I, we can see it in the Slack groups. You should join the Slack group, Summer, because oh, then, okay, okay. then you can see when people are talking trash about you. Fabulous. So, yeah. I was hope I was hoping for that on the internet. That was really my number one goal. <laughs> <laughs> Find people has, that has don't anyone ever, like me. <laughs> has anyone ever said anything bad about you on the internet, Summer? No. I recall a few times. Have happen. you been to the internet? <laughs> I recall a few episodes. <laughs> Which internet? <laughs> <laughs> the bad one? Yes, they said bad things uh, about her on the bad one. Uh, all right, well, let's do some of that official show stuff. So if you want to uh, shoot us a note, Ed at Pizza in Motion is the best place to email us. You can text us or leave us a voicemail at 571-293-6659. And just to make things really hard for Jeremiah, our producer, to put three handles up there, You've got Summer, who is at Mommy Points on all those social media places, at Kerr Points for my buddy Richard Kerr. And I'm pretty sure Julian still does not really do social media. Maybe like the occasional Twitter drive-by? Well, I, I, yeah, I, that is true. But I what we do have is at Points Path. Oh. Uh, That's too bad. I was going to make fun of you for thinking that uh, the power of social media was not necessary. Or to build a business. <laughs> so, to be <laughs> listen, to be fair, I, I don't do it. I have someone who does it. So yeah. That, well, he's that's got also people. I forget oh, founders have, always yeah. have, have founders really have people for everything. Episodes. Yeah. <laughs> people. Yeah, like, well, because day, listen, so. if you were, uh, if you relied on me to do social media, we'd already be uh, you know heading into the ground. He's still so. be trying to log in Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, one of these days I'm gonna get back in my Instagram. One of these as days. long as I can be one of your top eight on MySpace, we're all good. Count on it. What what does that mean? <laughs> yeah, I'm not old enough to know what that means. Is it? Yeah, dear Richard, you are definitely not old enough to know. Oh God, I got my joke. <laughs> I did, I did, I did. I'm still not sure if I was on MySpace, but I, I have to look back on it. And uh, and we're we're pretty certain that Points Path has at least 100 percent more Instagram accounts than Julian. I think that's a fair fair assessment. Oh yeah, guaranteed. Yeah, no, yeah. people are joining that thing much more interested in that than they are in me. So and and I I'm as so am I. So 
Well, and no Instagram account, no Uber account, so we just need to figure out what's going to be the trifecta there for things that you're going to to lose based on others. Yep, yeah, I mean, I think they probably get knocked out of the Ed Pizzarella Slack group is probably the next thing. I can't get back in. So. I don't know people like you there. But that's kind of weird. It's kind of weird. And you did say, by the way, great, great segue. You're you're an awesome podcaster. You know, I just want to I just want to comment. You know, Summer, you weren't here for the earlier episode. We we did a fundraiser with an organization called Pinky Swear which was started by a, a nine-year-old kid that had terminal cancer, and he came up with this charity to help buy gifts for other kids that were sick in the cancer ward. And before we even put the charity link out there, the Slack community crushed our original goal of $2,000 raised. And as of time of recording today, we are over $5,000 raised for Pinky Swear. So thank you to all the community folks. I have and never heard a charity more up your alley. That sounds fantastic. Oh yeah, they're a pretty cool organization. Yeah, it was it it definitely something that that fits us very well. And we're we're over five thousand dollars raised. All the messages from folks about donations. So thank you so much for everybody who's who's supported, and uh, and we're looking forward to doing more fun stuff in twenty twenty four. So thank you everybody who did that, and the Slack community specifically has been super awesome on making the counter on the fundraising bar keep on going up. So thanks for keeping us busy, and let's talk a little bit of travel. It's twenty twenty four, and Full disclosure, with this Motley crew, we sort of like, we I, I put out the call to see if everybody could join to record, and we managed to work out a time that everybody could record, which is a lot harder than you would think it would be. And and then we started talking about, well, what should we talk about? And and we, you know, there was a lot of sarcasm in trying to come up with topics. And but, everybody ignored it, and we just got on. We're gonna talk. Yeah, right, exactly right. And so we, where we came to this realization was that we were going to hit the button and see what came out of us, but... You know, the, the question that I posed to the group was, hey, like we're in 2024, you know, the listeners of this show and the viewers of the show are not the folks who have 15 credit cards in their wallet who are the ultra hackers. So, you know, what what should they be looking for in 2024? And some things have gotten better. Some things have gotten worse. And, and I want to talk a little bit about that. We talked a little bit about elite status last week, Richard and I. But as we go into 2024, and I'm going to tee up summer first because I think you're probably making the hardest left turn on elite status. At this point, I'm pretty sure that this is the last year you're going to be top to your elite status on an airline, right? And by the last year, you mean the last few days. Like yeah, this no, is I it. did not requalify for it. No, I said I wasn't gonna, and I didn't gonna. I have no desire at this phase of my life to be spending more time and money than absolutely necessary on an airplane or anywhere else for that matter. So I did not chase requalifying for United 1K status. And as of, I think, January 31st, is that when it happens? Or February? I don't know. It's gone. It's one of those two. Yeah, I keep forgetting. They're all different One of those now. two. Yeah. The plus points are January, I'm pretty sure. Anyway, it's all ending. And where did you, where will you end up in 2024 with United status? So what I have for 2024 is the next level, Platinum which is still plenty good. My daughter did suffer some shock when uh, she, my eight-year-old heard that we will not be boarding <laughs> with 1K because that's the only thing she remembers. Mm. I, I did let her know that means you don't have to be on the plane as long. So there is an upside there, but. <laughs> which has been my <laughs> argument in the entire time the last decade for boarding last. <laughs> <laughs> but you still get a seat. So you're going to be okay. And it actually still has the extra leg room at Platinum for up to eight people. So It'll be fine. But yeah, no, I said I wasn't going to chase it, didn't chase it. I'll be platinum. Will I requalify at platinum? I don't know. Like my year so far is not shaping up to be as travel intensive as 2023 was. So I frankly don't know if I will hit platinum again this year. I hope so. I think it's a nice kind of compromise benefit level that's high, but not as stupid high as 1K. But I don't know that I will chase it either. So we'll have to stay tuned and see how much travel adds to my schedule. Have you figured out how many round trips it is from Houston to Orlando to requalify for United Platinum? Because that's oh, how you're going to hit it. I mean, it's how much it's, do they cost, right? Yeah. It's like 3000 <laughs> On yeah, average, it's like 3, looking 000, at average weekly airfare. Yeah, but like even that, honestly, I, you know, we do go to Orlando a lot, but like once a quarter is a lot and once a quarter isn't, isn't making measurable progress against Platinum status with United. So we'll see. It's, I'm going to probably need something big that I don't know about yet for that to realistically happen because my everyday credit card spending that could help, and that is a positive change if we're getting into those, how United awards, awards their premier qualifying points for credit card spending is getting better this year. But most of that spending for me already goes to Hyatt, which is the one status I kept my claws dug into for Globalist <laughs> and requalified right at 60, right as the year ended. Rightfully so. Rightfully so. 
Yeah, and when we think about you know platinum status, you know I think I think you could hit thirty six segments on United. That would be stretching it, and probably you know you'd probably have to put some flights on United that maybe you wouldn't otherwise. But even at that, that still means you've got to spend twelve grand. That's a lot for someone who's not a you know every week road warrior. Hundred percent. I don't want to be like I'm not chasing. Ooh, that me could be in person. Let me see if we can go do that in person. Like, no, that's not. <laughs> That is not my life. Like I do want platinum, so there's a sweet spot in there, but I'm not going to manufacture reasons to get on a plane at this point. Life is just too busy and I like being home. I also like being away, but like I'm not dying to get out of here and force a reason to be on a plane. Well, and I think I think part of that too is, you know, what you get for elite status with airlines has changed quite a bit. And and Julian actually opened my eyes to this. In that, what we started talking last year when when Delta made their changes, and Julian asked me the very frank question of like, well, hey, Ed, like, is platinum really going to be that much different for you than diamond with Delta, given how f- infrequently you fly? And and Julian, I think it was a great point about what you actually get from airlines nowadays. Yeah, I, and on top of that, interestingly enough, or related, I think it's interestingly, it's both never been a better time to have a co-branded airline credit card and also never been a worse time to have an airline co-branded credit card. (laughs) Obviously the worst time for all the reasons we've said, because a flexible credit card that has points that can transfer is always better, more flexibility, more options. But on the other hand, the airlines now, the U S major big three have essentially made it so you can buy your way to status. If that's something you want to do now, when it came to ed, uh, you know, Ed, you you because you have a company, you you spend a lot of money on credit cards, so you could manufacture your way all the way to diamond status. But is that the best use of your credit card spend? Are there other ways to do it? Yeah, I mean, are there other uses for that spend? And the point I was just making at the time was, given that you're you know based in Washington, mostly flying out of Dulles, you know anywhere with Delta, most anywhere with Delta, you're going to have to connect. Platinum's probably enough for you for the amount of time you're going to use. Yeah, and I think Julian pulling ever... out best of times, worst of times this early in the podcast. <laughs> 2024, best of times, worst of times. Here we go. <laughs> uh, if I remember correctly, I think that you're Delta Platinum. Is I think that's where you ended up. Uh, no, I've dropped all the way to Delta Silver, actually. Uh, I actually oh, just didn't oh. travel very much last year. I did uh, enough just to make silver, and ba- I didn't even purposely do that. That's just sort of the way it happened. But much yeah. like summer, I've come to a point in my life where I'm not going to chase elite status. It doesn't, uh, you know, it, I think also when we were younger, it was more fun to do that. But, you know, as you get older, I do find myself the night before a trip and I'm getting ready and I'm packing. I don't look forward to it as much. I don't necessarily, I still, once I'm out on the road, I do enjoy it, but I don't want to say it feels like a chore, but it just doesn't have that level of excitement that it had maybe 10 years ago when I was younger. And obviously, you know, as we all get older, we have more responsibilities at home and such. So yeah. So I ended up at Delta Silver and I'm perfectly happy with it. Domestic schleps are absolutely a chore. (laughs) There's nothing enjoyable about schlepping back to the Atlanta airport to schlep it to one of the New York airports to schlep it in traffic. God, man, it's such a chore. I find myself the night before packing and like just slowly uh, unintentionally unpacking myself because that's how bad I don't want to do it. Yeah, (laughs) it's, it's true for me. Like I still love all of it, but I only love all of it at a certain level and dose. And I've found that I'm trying to stay in that sweet spot where I am excited about it. I mean, packing and unpacking sucks, but like (laughs) the travel experience as a whole, right? Like for me, you know, a family trip now once a quarter, which is still probably well above the average, but like that feels fun and exciting. But the pace I was doing it when the kids were younger, when they could more easily miss school for long weekends or whatever, that would feel not fun right now anymore. But that's how we got status. It was a byproduct of that. And then it became a hamster wheel that you want to stay on. But like y'all were hitting at, it's also just less valuable now. I'm going to have United premier qualifying point or not for the plus point. I'm going to have United plus points expiring on me. And it's not for lack of trying to use them. I wasn't squirreling them away for some amazing use. I was trying to use them all the time, flying to Orlando, flying to New York for work, flying anywhere. I would throw plus points on the reservation and just 75, 80 plus percent of the time they wouldn't clear. And so 
But what would have cleared 100% of the time on those domestic jaunts is a $200 cash to upgrade to first. And so right. why spend a couple thousand dollars more chasing 1K status for upgrades that probably won't clear most of the time? Although maybe that'll get a little better now that there's fewer of us. They've called the riffraff like me. But still, my $200 to buy up to first, which was the most common offer I would see, is always going to clear. And my plus points probably still wouldn't. Yeah, that's another really good point because... When I was working for WWE back in 2009 and 2010, I and I was flying all the times so just because of work. I was flying every week. My upgrades on Delta would clear every other week, I would say, about at least 50, maybe 60 percent of the time. I don't think anybody's clearing 50, 60 percent of the time on Delta anymore because they're selling those seats, as, as Summer points out. So Summer's 100 percent right. The other issue here is that at least this is just not worth what it used to be. Well, and to that point, I mean, you know, you and I are the elders, the elders here. And like I can remember back in the late 90s when I first started the Road Warrior world. And it was odd when I was below 98 percent cleared upgrades on American. Every upgrade cleared. They all cleared at the window. And now, I mean, I think, you know, I think I, I think, Richard, you can attest to this. You know, you you're you're you've got one K status in 2024 from the way I look at it, I got global services, but effectively I feel like I'm a 1K with better plus points. I think the most I'm expecting to get out of my status and the most I expect you to get out of your status this year is economy plus booking for the entire family when you take, if you took a family trip. Like I think that's that's the high water mark right now. Is that fair to say? Yeah, I actually did that last night. We're all going up to New York for a couple of weeks. So Uncle Julian, the curves are coming to town. Um, and we're all... He's like, what? Yeah. Clear yeah, the couch, out. Uncle Julian. <laughs> Come on, man. I, I like it when Rick brings all the curves because it means I, I don't have to just talk to the one cur. You know, I get to talk <laughs> yeah. to all the curves too. Uh, yeah, booked the flight last night. It was 10,000 United miles one way per person. And then we all got Economy Plus on the brand new 737 Max, which is a comfortable flight on United. And we're all going to get a uh, free check back. And like, that's awesome. Like, nobody's going to upgrade. I think I'm. Probably doing way better than most United 1Ks, again, flying out of Atlanta. There's like two of us here. So my upgrade is clearing about 50% of the time. But Economy Plus seat selection and actually same day change is really what I'm after out of out of United. And you and get all that at Platinum. So here ex- we sit. Yep. Exactly right. I say summary. Like you're getting all of that at the Platinum level. So you don't even really need to be 1K for those sorts of things. And I think, I mean, even gold gets you some of those same benefits. You don't get free same day change, if I remember correctly. I haven't. I'm trying to process gold, but I think you still get economy plus a time of booking, right? For gold? For two people, yeah. Yeah. So Oh, but see, you're missing out on the biggest benefit, which is my snack box that I get as a United One K in economy. So You know what? <laughs> they sell those. I've learned, you know, if you just pay <laughs> a few dollars and you get twenty five percent back of a United card, you can still get the snack box without taking nah, I don't extra believe you. I don't, I don't believe I it's true. <laughs> I, I had a hard time believing it too, but I read it like four times. It's true. They'll wow. sell them. Like yeah. the yeah, seats, it's crazy. There's absolutely zero chance I'll requalify for 1K. Not a chance I'll qualify for platinum. Flight fares have just tanked over the last three or four weeks. Ed, looking at my usual commute, it's like 108 bucks one way from Atlanta to New York right now. <laughs> so like, wow. I yeah, mean, super- great for something, but yeah, bad for status. When everything's tied to cash, how much yeah. did you spend? Low fares that the business is paying for aren't going to help get you there. No. So I won't be requalifying it again. Like always, I usually switch airlines halfway through the year. So we'll see what, what comes in June, July. <laughs> Let's talk for a second about that, that rich, that point that Richard just made about cash fares really dropping. And uh, at points path, we've also seen that uh, understandably points fares have also dropped along with cash fares, which is uh, not surprising at this point, but that's, I think going to make, if that sustains and we'll see as we get into the spring and summer, that's a pretty huge change from where we've been for the last 18 to 24 months in the industry. I, I think it's, it really does change people's travel patterns in the points and miles world, whether you're going to use points and miles or whether it makes sense to just, like Richard would say, pay 109 bucks to, for the flight and just call it a day and earn more miles and, and go on your way. I think that's something really interesting to watch here in the next uh, six, six to 12 months. And I think you bring up a good point because – you know, Summer talked about like the dilution of the or the 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 decrease of the the folks that qualify in these elite status tiers, and I think you know there is this sweet spot where you say if enough people lose elite status and they're not traveling as much, then you know two things have the possibility of happening. One is awards become cheaper, 
And two, to Summer's point, you know, that $200 upgrade becomes more prevalent because I don't think the airlines are going to go back to the old models of jacking up the prices of those upgrades. They're going to keep trying to monetize those seats. So, it, it you know, it, in, in this new world, being a free agent and saving that money on what you were doing to chase status may pay for those upgrades via the cash path. I haven't seen anybody doing reasonable priced mileage upgrade awards. And I'd be curious if you guys think that that's something that we'll see again. I mean, Delta does a pretty great job, right, in the app after you book, where it's pretty much pegged at one sky mile percent of the charge. So it's either like 99 bucks or 9,900 miles. And Delta just maximizes the absolute junk out of selling those, which is why nobody clears upgrades on Delta and why upgrades on Delta would never even factor into my consideration of whether I would go for Delta Elite status or not. But they, they, they hammer it. They crush it. I mean, anytime I've had a Delta flight booked the last few years, you get those offers and you check day by day, more and more seats are, are picked up via that offer, I'm sure. And then they're all gone and nobody, there's and 30 so diamonds on the upgrade 20, list. 2024 bets, I'm going to bet that United picks up on that. They've been tinkering some with their uh, using your miles as a fixed cash value for tickets for a while now. That's going to be my bet is that we see by the end of the year, they're doing more of that because why wouldn't they? Yeah, because they want to keep all their win, win. Yeah, right. It, but it is a win win for the airline when they do that, right? Because not only are they, you know, monetizing seat granted, it's with their own currency, but they are selling it in some way. And the way these programs work is they actually do see some revenue from their own programs and all of that. But more to the point, they're engaging with their program. With somebody who's getting a successful redemption, and that person maybe doesn't know or doesn't care that it's a bad value. All they know is they got in first class and are almost certainly then going to continue collecting United Miles, Delta Miles, whatever it is. So it really is, I, I agree with Summer, actually, I, I think more and more airlines will, will really, really aggressively monetize those upgrade options, uh, both in miles and cash. Well, and in United- The vast majority of people listening. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> Damn it, Ed. <laughs> I have horrible uploads uh, today. It's all my fault. No, the vast majority of people not listening to this podcast had, have no idea how to maximize their points and miles, right? And it's something we have to constantly remind ourselves. They don't care if it's bad value or they don't know if it's good value. They might stumble into it, but free is free, right? And that's what they get it. And I think about every single day when I go into our dashboard and see how many people redeem their built points for a statement credit or to cover rent or to pay for Amazon. And it's 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 hundreds of millions, right? So people don't. And we should all say thank you because that's what makes it possible for the programs to <laughs> offer the redemptions that we really yeah, like. If people weren't cashing them in for Amazon, then we wouldn't be redeeming them to fly some fancy pants first class. So nope. thank you very much to everybody who does redeem for Amazon and statement credits. And that's what we're trying to do with points path, of course, is trying to educate people a little more about the value of their miles and literally tell you, hey, using your miles here is a great deal here. Using your miles on this other flight is a bad deal. And we fully acknowledge that some people don't care. They just would rather not pay cash. And that's fine. That's great. Hopefully, in that case, they're using points path just to do their research much more quickly than having to hop from site to site to site. But at the end of the day, if you've decided that you want to use your Delta Amex credit card and you don't want a flexible credit card, more power to you, but at least try and be redeeming your miles in a way that you're getting great value for them or at least better value for them. You're describing every resident of Atlanta because every grocery store and every restaurant, all I see people pull out around here is these Delta Amex cards and I'm like, Ugh, quit. <laughs> yep. Y'all just sort of accidentally got, got me remembering the newsletter I wrote for tomorrow at the points guy. If y'all don't subscribe to our newsletter, come over. I promise it's it's quicker than a points podcast, but that's tomorrow. It's about like how are chase points valued at two cents each by TPG. It's actually just over. But anyway, when, when you log in to use them in the chase portal, you get one to 1.5 cents for, depending on which chase card you have. And the answer is those transfer bonuses that most people, even most people probably listening to this or reading TPG don't know they because it's not the option you see the most. What you see the most is generally going to be the ones that are going to cost the least to the programs. So that's so if we're talking about 2024 golds and flexible currencies, like that's the thing to learn. If you learn nothing else this year is just the difference in how to ramp it up. And it is usually those transfer partners. And then you can be maximizing your stuff with Julian and his products. And that's the key to unlocking the value in 2024 
when the programs are sort of volatile, uh, it's, it's those transfer partners. So if you don't read the TPG newsletter, we're talking about that tomorrow, which I'm sure is in the past if you're listening to this, but <laughs> that's what we're talking about. <laughs> Hey, Julie, yes. how long until you guys add more programs, specifically the one program you're missing for all of my New York searches, which is True Blue? It, 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 really? True Blue? Interesting. I don't Out of know all the airlines that fly Are between. Are you changing airlines already? We're not midway through the year. Yes. Well, I got a funny story about I know. What's about, up with that? <laughs> I got a funny story about me messing up this one. Big, it's probably the biggest mistake I've made since whenever the last time Emily got mad at me was. So Thursday. But, no. You made so a rope I mean, drop I, again? Don't do that. <laughs> she don't have to do that. She can come whenever she wants. And so she doesn't. No, I mean, I do the nonstop searches on Google Flights for every airline that goes between Atlanta and New York and all three airports. So that way I just get a quick snapshot. And now Points Pass is very helpful in showing me, especially when I was trying to book the family up there. Hey, how many sky miles is this going to be? How many nine miles is this going to be? And I'm not flying American because I got rid of my nonstop route. So then the holes there are, you know, True Blue, which is they fly to both LaGuardia and JFK out of Atlanta. But what had happened was <laughs> I got the Delta status match Mosaic 3, had a couple of good flights on JetBlue's new interior product, which is just a superior way to fly economy between Atlanta and New York than the legacy airlines. So I uh, applied for that little JetBlue card on December 31st and called in and got the reconsideration line to approve me, which is great. Now I extend that status until uh, the end of this year. Well, what had happened was is apparently you had to be approved by December 30th not December 31st so it doesn't I, sound anything like JetBlue that that doesn't sound like their IT at all so so I so I have a lovely new JetBlue card for absolutely no reason and no status with JetBlue and I I politely called them up and and chatted their text agent after the first one and said hey guys it looks like I opened this a day late you know would love to give you a few thousand dollars in business probably this year compared to anybody else and they said this sounds great you no, you're not gonna give it to you I was like, okay. You know, well, you, Richard, you should wait, email wait, my that, mistake, uh, right? <laughs> like, it is my you mistake. You should email. But... You should email that the mosaic on the DL email address because they might you might get a different answer from that. Oh, I forgot about that email address. Oh, that's yeah. Right. You should no. try that because that's the people who are actually handling those status matches. I I think you might might have success there, but try. It. But yeah, I think that I may that makes total sense. I did the JetBlue match too at Silver, and JetBlue's in, interior product is terrific as long as you don't mind the possibility of getting where you need to go three or four hours late, depending on, <laughs> yeah. you know, how important your trip is. <laughs> that has been, that has been the holdup. Yeah. So the last couple of trips I did, I did fly United because I had to be somewhere at exactly a given time. And I think just saw Seth Miller put out the year to date rolling 12 month calendar uh, on time performance and JetBlue is dead last below frontier at like 65% on time. And so for, for those of us trying to maximize every hour, we're home and not in the city or somewhere, you know, you can't take a four hour delay. So I, I did fly United said JetBlue, but there are times when I will be flying this year, like on a leisurely Sunday afternoon or evening. And it doesn't matter if I land a couple hours late and, um, you know, would love to fly JetBlue. So ladies and gentlemen, I made a big mistake there. I didn't read those terms and conditions one more time. I thought for sure it was the end of the year, but uh, no, it was December 30th. So I look forward to meeting that well, minimum spend on my new JetBlue plus card for absolutely no reason. I'm sure you're still going to get some points for all your trouble. <laughs> yeah. Yes. <laughs> Richard, to answer your original question, we've actually done some surveying of our points back users. JetBlue, as far as airlines, they programs they'd like to see next, JetBlue is about fifth or sixth on the list. Uh, what we get more prominently is Air France, Air Canada, British Airways, and Virgin Atlantic. Uh, so we will get to JetBlue, but it probably won't be first. All right, February 1st. You heard it here on the Mazda Go podcast, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> you know, I think my connection broke up. What, what, what was that? What did you say? I just want to figure yeah. out how you bribed everybody on the podcast to talk about uh, points path this week. I, like, I, I love it. I was li literally using it. Super awesome. Literally using it last night to book the whole family of four on, you know, the nonstop to New York. So very hot and very you handy. Know, I, I, I will say I, you know, because we built points path and I, I tried it and I, I tested a lot of different ways, but. You don't really know until you're using it, whether it, it's really useful or not. And I was booking a ticket for my nephew a couple of weeks ago and I pulled up points path and I got done the research done in about a third of the time that it would normally take me to jump from site to site. And I thought, wow, that's a really great tool. I, I would, I should, Who somebody should, it? should build that. Yeah. That's, <laughs> that really worked. It really, it was, it was kind of a really cool moment where I, I realized that I had actually built something that I, I really actually wanted to use and, and, and that it worked. 
And Richard is happy that you used the word built. So everybody, everybody's happy. Great ecosystem today. So hey, go... that's a great transition to what credit card we should all be getting in 2024, right, <laughs> well, Richard? Richard already <laughs> shared the one he's starting with. Yeah, exactly. I, yeah, I, so... I, I got it. I got it. I got it in 2023. To be fair. Yeah, yeah. Well, so, but 2020. So... Jeff Blue says 2024 started on December 31st. So yeah. So yeah. Uh, December 30th. Yeah. December yeah, 30th, yeah, so, yeah. Started apparently. Yeah. So, so, uh, so yeah, let's let's talk a little bit about credit cards for 2024. I, I, there was one thing I want to add to on the United thing that I think is is worth considering for those of us who will be patronizing United. They're in a little bit of a perfect storm time too, in that all of the planes that they're all the narrow bodies that are delivering for them over the next few years will have expanded first class cabins. So I do think that with the reduction in elite numbers, we're going to continue to see them having to do something to maximize those larger first class cabins. I look forward to cheap. First class paid upgrades for the next handful of years. Let's see who gets to you, go first. You Julian, keep, you keep dreaming that dream, man. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Julian, what do you what What's the credit card outlook for you for twenty twenty four? What What are you What are you interested in? What are you going to be spending on? All right, so I had in twenty twenty three unwound myself almost entirely from American Express. The reason was I was just tired of trying to chase all the monthly credits. The Uber credit, which of course I can't use now. Yeah, uh, the, don't worry about uh, that the, one. The, oh, yeah, as that's thanks to Ed, I can't use that. But they've just really have made it hard. Not hard, but just it's something. It's another thing to think about. And as life is busy, we it's tough to put that, make that a priority. So I had basically unwound myself from all of the almost all the Amex cards. I had a Blue Business Plus, and that was all I left. But I am picking back up an Amer an Amex Business Platinum. Because I do think I will be traveling more in 2024, and I do value the lounge access for that. Even with the Centurions being fairly getting fairly overcrowded at this point, but I do still fly Delta as my primary airline, so I get the Delta Sky Clubs. Even with the and 10, 10 visits a year for me is is plenty. Although that doesn't start in 2024, does it? Right? Doesn't that start in 25? I don't remember. The limits on club visits. 25. Uh, everybody's, yeah, 25. So even that doesn't matter in 2024. So, and, and then most importantly, the, the fact that with the 35% rebate, I can guarantee myself at least a cent and a half on all redemptions, if, if that's of value to me. And it usually, I, I do like to maximize my points. So I feel like if the floor is 1.5 and I can earn them easily and I can earn them at 2X on my Blue Business Plus and combine them, then that makes sense for me. But I don't think I'm going to be picking up, you know, three or four more Amex cards like I used to be. I, I think that that's probably the one that'll stick. And, and it's purely for uh, travel benefits. Just, just out of curiosity, what did you get for a sign-up bonus? I did not get the 190. I got 150 plus 10K for an authorized user. Because I've previously had the Business Platinum and not that long ago, about two years ago. So I also had an offer. I was targeted with an offer that, was, that made it okay for me to have previously have the card. Yeah, I mean, I still think 150k plus 10k for an authorized user is a pretty solid sign-up bonus for that card. That's yeah. well worth it. In yeah, my opinion. agreed. Yeah, no, I thought it made sense to pull pull the trigger on it. So, all right, Mr. Kerr, what's what's in your wallet in 2024? Yeah, we talked about it a few times. I also have pretty much stopped all spend on Amex. I got up to almost a half million Amex points, which hasn't happened to me in in many years since I was like only focusing on churning the cards. And the only thing I really redeem them on are the towards paid airfare, right? 35% pay with points rebate with the business platinum card is all I use those points for when there's not space or what Delta does here, which is there's no such thing as booking good deals on close in Delta flights with miles anymore. The jack up the price and fly anywhere. It's going to be 30, 40,000 miles per person when the cash fare can still be relatively reasonable. So then I, I use those for that, but that was, I got enough MX points. So, you know, then I got that freedom unlimited three X on everything, six X on dining and drug stores. And man, uh, we're just hammering that, and I'm going to continue to hammer that all year so that in, I think I got in October, October 24, like another massive entire stockpile should be dumped in my account at the end of the, the card member year. And it's really been great because Emily doesn't have to worry about cards anymore. It's 3X on everything. Just I literally went through every mobile wallet she has, every food app, every Amazon, everything, and said, only use this card on everything. And she's like, oh, thank God. <laughs> like, I don't have to. <laughs> I don't have to worry about this stuff anymore. And I was like, yep, works for me. So I fully expect to get, man, looking at, I mean, we're going to get a few hundred thousand uh, ultimate rewards by putting absolutely everything for the household on this for an entire year. So excited about that Freedom Unlimited offer and have no idea how Chase is affording that on a no annual fee card. 
Yeah, and for what it's worth, I'm really looking forward to Mrs. Kerr learning in October that that, that will be, this will be the only year where she ever gets to focus on one credit card, and life will go back to the way it was before, where you're like, here's three cards with three different colored stickers. Go. No, she doesn't do it anymore. She just says blue business, MX blue business, everything. And I'm like, that's fine. I don't care. <laughs> like, I'm not <laughs> playing this game anymore. <laughs> Enjoy. We ha- we have we got larger Disney fights to worry about, so she can have the blue business plus, and then we'll worry about all the all the Disney stuff. <laughs> Which I gotta give gotta give a shout out here to one of our podcast listeners that actually hit me up. Uh, it was a good week for renting DVC points here at the Kerr household. All of my points are gone over the span of seventy two hours. I think everybody spent like the first weekend or last weekend of the holidays just planning their Disney trips and got hit up out of everywhere. But uh, shout out to Derek who got his family two studio rooms at Bay Lake Towers for November. But Disney was charging if you didn't if you wanted to stay at the Contemporary, which is Bay Lake Towers right next to, and you can walk to the Magic Kingdom. A tower room in the main tower of Contemporary. Somewhere, how much do you think it was for November? Early November, not Thanksgiving. Just a normal night? Normal night in the tower. So not the ridiculous garden thing that's way back, you know, not in that, but the actual <laughs> tower of Contemporary. For a normal room, probably 900 bucks. It was $888 a night. I, I win a prize. Yeah, oh. $888 a night for a motel room, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. And Derek said, hey, can I rent some of your points? I don't want to pay this. And I, I mean, he ended up getting half off versus what Disney was charging. Okay, so Derek, I have some points, too, if you need to call me. This was not hey, a successful sales week in my DVC point accounts. <laughs> put out there, but ladies and gentlemen, if you, if you don't, if, you, if you're if you looking for that Disney trip and you're trying to book direct, don't do it. Contact me, Ed, or, or Summer first, and we'll rent you some points. I get my next batch. February is my use year, so I get my first full year of Grand Floridian points here in a couple of weeks, and I will be looking to rent those out, so, so hit us up. Uh, so shout out to Derek for that, and then some other people rented off me as well, and I was like, man, those went fast. I should buy some more contracts. <laughs> and then I showed you my uh, yes, I then I showed you my that. annual fee bill for the year, and it, it made, made you a little nauseous. I'm so, sure. Yeah. It's, I'm sure the, it's a big five figures. Yeah, it's, the dues is gross. Pretty, hey, yeah. but we did solid work between the the gift card deals. Summer always throws out there on her stories, and then Kroger having four x fuel points on gift cards. I I did really well on saving. I think as much as you can on dues by paying with discounted Disney gift cards. So it was a good week. Good week in the career house. Yeah, and we had a, a couple of people in the Slack community post deals as well, May and Sean and a couple others uh, for, for gift card deals. So they're they're definitely out there. All right, Summer, close us out with okay, where so are you I spending? I have Polynesian and Alani points for everyone who didn't ask. but Polynesian, um, by the not way. Not as yeah. many. Yeah, crushing it on Polynesian. Love that. All right, well, give me a call. I have a few. Not as many as the guys yet. <laughs> Okay, so cards for the year. Uh, I just applied a few days ago for the Ink Business Cash, I believe it was, with the 90,000-point offer. I am pending, though. I probably have too many Chase Business cards open. I probably need to give them a call here soon. That offer's ending soon if anybody wants it. I am still tempted by the same as you, the this Freedom Unlimited 3X. Josh is a lot like Emily. I think he likes to keep his awards simple and use the same card for everything, so... We've been using up a lot of Chase points for United and Hyatt, so I need to replenish that. That's a maybe. Richard did not pay me to say this, but it continues to always maybe be the year that I get a belt card. (laughs) It is on the list, but I have not had the sense of urgency to get that because it's not like with these other cards where they have the big offer and it goes away. Like It is what it is, and I'm waiting for Richard to entice me with some limited time reason to go ahead and prioritize it. You could probably get 150% transfer bonuses. Probably. That doesn't entice but you. I won't I'll have any you. points to transfer, so <laughs> we there's a math the problem. It's one of the points people don't want. Hey, we hope, we hope this is the year to welcome you to the fold. We hope oh, I hope so, too. If I buy more DVC, getting the belt right before that might be a good plan. Uh, and then the last one that's sort of at the top of my 2024 wish list is the Capital One Venture X to continue to be able to visit the lounges if and when the lounge network does expand because right now I don't have a need for more visits, but I could see a world where that happens. So there's my wish list for 2024 and continue to spend like heck on my Hyatt card because I will want globalist again. I think the current thinking on that ink, those ink cards going pending is to just wait and not call them. I think. I think I have a hard problem. I I've done this before Uh, with chase where I did nothing and it eventually just expired. I think I have too many. Oh, Oh, that's interesting. Okay. I think gotcha. Or at least that's what happened last time, unless something's changed in the last six months. That was my... How long has it been? Since I tried. About half a year. No, no, no. Yeah, I'm saying that you've been waiting, sitting in pen. Probably about a week days. now. I'd give it a couple more days. All right. Julian said give it a couple more days. I'll procrastinate. You get so, that but I hear you, but, litter. 
I hear you on though the the offer coming to an end soon. So I, I get what you're saying. But you 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 applied under the offer. You should still be okay. Hey Ed, did you see that sneaky comment somebody threw in the Slack community yesterday about potentially getting like a hundred and fifty thousand point sign up bonus on an ink? If you oh, didn't, I, I had never. I had never seen that before through a through a private banker. So if you want to know more about that, you should really be in the Slack community. So I, I have that on my list to investigate with that person this weekend. Huh. Huh. 150K. Yeah. News to me. We'll see. Yeah. Yeah, that would be that'd be solid, except for I have a lot of ink cards. So there's that. What is the I have two and I feel like there's no chance I get a third. Does everybody have three? Like how many can we have? I, I have yeah, I have three, I believe. Uh, I'm trying for yeah, a third. I didn't, no. I didn't have any trouble getting three. They did call me, and I, I did end up moving some uh, credit around, but I didn't have any trouble. But I think I have five open Chase small business cards. I'm not sure they're itching to give me a sixth open one. Yeah, could be, I don't have your... any other yeah, Chase business cards, yeah. I think I have four inks. I have to go count now. Hmm. Yeah, 150K. I, you know, I mean, I, look, I think the Chase ink cards have really have really held their weight over the years. I still think they're very valuable cards. Some of them aren't as valuable as they used to be, but I still think there's plenty of value in chasing cards. And I think, you know, Julian's definitely a great example of, you know, somebody who, you know, moving into small business now, it's not hard to be a small business owner. And, you know, these cards are, are really, really relevant. So in, in the interest of time, I will give my credit card recap next week, which means that Julian and Summer will actually have to listen to hear what cards I'm going to use. So neither one of them will have any idea what cards they're going to use in 2024, right, Richard? How will we sleep at night, Julian? (laughs) Well, you can actually put on the Miles to Go podcast at night when you can't fall asleep and the smoothing voice of that George (laughs) Baritone. Just put you right there. God, y'all are so full of the life hacks. (laughs) Y'all not going to hear his credit card if we fall asleep. And yeah, all right, I got you. Yeah. Quick business note, Thrifty Traveler is our sponsor again this week, and it was a great week if you're a Thrifty Traveler premium member because I used the deals that came out this week to book our good friend Disney Lauren's honeymoon trip to to Europe. 50,000 mile flying blue awards were available. We had that great ITA Airways deal that came out and then the Tap Portugal fair sales as well. There have been some awesome deals this week. Any one of those deals would have more than paid for a Thrifty Traveler Premium annual subscription. And if you are a new subscriber, you can go to thriftytraveler.com, look for the premium link, and use the code GO10 to earn $10 off your first year of Thrifty Traveler Premium. And I think it is time for us to get on out of here. Summer, tell folks where they can find you when you're not uh, using the unicorn headphones to, to talk with us about credit cards. They are just green today. They are children's though. Uh, so you can find me on most of the platforms on the wild, wild world web at mommy points, M O M M Y points, uh, or you'll find my stories on the points guy and often in the daily newsletter from the points guy, which you should all subscribe to. <laughs> Love it. All right, Julian, where are, where are you? What's left on social media? Let's you get points at points path across all channels and definitely come to pointspath.com and check out our Chrome extension. Uh, it really will save you time and it has absolutely no cost. It's completely free. So uh, come and, and grab a, grab it, install it. You're, you will be glad you did. Should I, should I let Richard talk about himself or do you just want to, you just want to, you just want to leave it there, Mr. Kerr? I don't ever say anything about myself. You go ahead. What is he? You go, what is he you go to a concert. What are you doing? He has there? fire. He's what is going on? Yeah, fire. what is happening? I have, I have a, I have a, a stress relief candle here. This is mahogany teak wood, made with essential oils, and I keep my lighter here to light my candles whenever I need a usa. Not later, at all so. weird. Not at all middle agey. What? Young and hip and anybody, not anybody every man has a ma- mahogany teak wood candle in his office. Come on, you're missing out. Like, let's go. Anybody who's not like anybody who's not watching the podcast will now be clicking on YouTube as quickly as they can to watch this riveting video of Richard trying to light a candle. So I want to thank my my buddies for taking an hour out of their day to, to talk. I know it's tough to convert schedules and get all this stuff lined up, and everybody's got to run for a meeting at the top of the hour. So I am super appreciative of Julian Summer and Kerr for spending an hour talking about what 2024 is going to look like. We got to figure out where our spring break and summer trips are going to be booked for 2024 and figure out how the heck we're going to pay for it. But until we do all that, and until we upload again, we've got miles to go. No, no, no. I just turned off my camera to wipe my nose. <laughs>